Hey guys, what's going on? Drew here for Z Code System coming to you with another NCAA basketball tournament video today. We came to you last week with an NCAA basketball tournament video just to profile the tournament and what's going to be going on. And yeah, it was getting very exciting now because the tournament will tip off this week. They're going to be tipping off the first four games coming up in just a day or so. And then we're going to have the first round and second round of the NCAA basketball tournament after that. And I can't wait for this. This is going to be great because, of course, as you know, last year the NCAA basketball tournament was canceled, postponed, uh, whichever word you want to use, canceled really. Uh, and we didn't get to see any of the great March Madness that we're used to seeing. So I'm very excited about getting to see this at the end of the week. I know I'm going to be glued to my TV in my office watching uh, throughout the day. So it's going to be really exciting. And, you know, I always love it. And I say this every time we do a video on the NCAA basketball tournament. I love it because it is a callback to my youth of being a teenager uh, and, and a college student watching these games, staying home from classes, and just enjoying a day of basketball uh, in front of the TV. So I'm really excited about this, and it should be a lot of fun. Now, as you know, of course, the tournament was canceled last season. So um, the Virginia Cavaliers go into the tournament as still reigning champions. Who knew? Two years in a row uh, reigning champions uh, without even playing in the tournament last year. But they're going in as reigning champions technically uh, after winning the 2019 tournament. And, and so today we're going to take a look at four games. I'm going to give you four picks for the NCAA basketball tournament. And the Virginia Cavaliers are going to be one of those. Uh, well, their game is going to be one of the games that I'm going to have a look at and talk with you about. But, of course, you can always go to the Z Code system dot com backslash blog check out the blog read up on all the things that we post there if you don't want to do the videos or if you want to do the videos and have the written accompaniment then go for it um but you can always get uh some information on the blogs that you don't get from the videos and you can get stuff on the videos you don't get from the blog so vice versa um but go over there check out the blog uh, i wrote it up there and you can also get some pics for some other games going on um, well, as you can see there, those are some things that happened last week that we posted about, some NBA, some Premier League football, soccer. Uh, you can go over and check everything out once we, or, or every every day almost, and get some picks for games that we post there for free. And of course, you can always go over to zcodesystem.com and use all of the great tools to help you make educated picks on whatever sport it is that you follow. Now, I'm going to be using um, the VIP picks wall here to go over a few of the games here uh, with you and to chat about them. So let's get onto that right now. Okay, as you know, all the games will be going on in Indiana this year. They're going to be using several different venues for the games this year. And yeah, it's going to cut down on travel and it's going to allow everyone to stay um, uh, in one place and basically quarantine and, and stay healthy, at least hopefully stay healthy. And um, as I said before on last week's video, there's going to be a cap of 25% capacity on all venues. So that will hopefully keep people uh, healthy as possible. And um, so let's take a look at some of these games. I've picked out four games, and the games I've kind of gone with are games in which we might see an upset. Uh, I've gone for games where we see such as a, a five seed versus a 12 seed, an eight versus a nine. Uh, those are always the fun games because uh, they're very close you know, typically I'm, I'm, I'm kind of generalizing here, but those games are a lot of times close. We see um, uh, some evenly matched teams a lot of the times, and there's always a potential chance for an upset. Now, one versus 16, uh, you know, there's rarely a, a chance for an upset in that. And I say rarely because, you know, we can always see an upset. Um, but this is more uh, of a chance to see that. And for me, these are the, the games that are more fun to watch. I hate watching those one versus 16 games because – it's usually the one seed blasting the 16, or if the 16 makes it a bit difficult or a competitive game, the, the one still you know comes out on top. So we're going to look at a few games here, four games in total. Uh, and the first one I've identified today is the Georgetown versus Colorado game. And I'm just going to make my picture there just a, a little bit smaller. I know it makes a lot of people sad, but uh, we'll make that a little bit smaller, and we'll take a look at this now. As you can see here, the odds are not currently up on these games. Now, I'm sure you can go over to your favorite sports book, whichever one it is. Uh, mine is Bet365, but, you know, you can use whoever you prefer. And you can check out, um, you know, the odds if they're posted at the moment, which there are odds for individual games on spe specified sports books. We just don't have it up just yet as we continue to collate them. Uh, but we do see that both of these teams are burning hot here. Uh, Colorado is coming off of a loss to Oregon State in the Pac-12 tournament. 
Um, Georgetown won the Big East tournament, if you were watching. Uh, and the thing about Georgetown right now is they are burning hot. And this throws up a bit of a question. Can Georgetown really keep this going? They won four games in four days to win the Big East tournament, um, upsetting Cry uh, Cry Creighton uh, on the final day in the Big East championship game. And they also knocked off the number one seed Villanova there, as you can see, 72-71 on March 11th. Again, red hot. Patrick Ewing's team is playing very, very well. And one of the headlines today in the sports news for the basketball uh, was um, that Georgetown is already the story of the season, uh, story of March Madness going to this tournament. And you know what? A lot of people, I'm sure, are going to back this Georgetown team. You can see these odds right here uh, that we have um, odds of 2.736 uh, 2 there. Um or sorry, let me go over that again. Um, odds of plus 174 there. Um, so Colorado going in as the favorite to win this game. And you know what? I actually like Colorado for this game. I know that we're talking about maybe having some upsets in this, but I don't think Georgetown can keep that hot streak, that momentum going in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Uh, it's one thing to win four games in four days. Uh, it's another thing to have a week off and come back in the NCAA tournament and play a Colorado team who is playing pretty well. Um, if you think about Georgetown uh, winning those four games in a row, four games in four days, uh, they got on a hot streak. They were able to use that momentum to to upset the apple cart and to win the Big East tournament. No one really gave them gave them a, a chance. They were the eight seed, I believe it was, in the Big East tournament. So I'm going against Georgetown on this. I like Colorado to win this game and to move on. And to to go on to the uh, to the second round now, can they go on any further than that? I will wait and see who their opponent will be for the second round. But I'm back in Colorado for this game to beat Georgetown and end this Cinderella Cinderella run they are already on. Now let's take a look at the next game that I have identified uh, for this uh, for this weekend, and we're going to take a look at this Maryland versus Connecticut game. And we see that Connecticut comes in as the seven seed. Maryland comes in at the ten. So again, this is a great, um, a great, similarly matched teams on paper. It looks like you know evenly uh, matched by the seeds. Um, both teams not necessarily having the the best years. You wouldn't expect. Um, you'd expect better, actually. I should say, out of a Maryland or a Connecticut team. Uh, we see that Connecticut is the odds on favorite there at minus one fifty four. Well, we've got Maryland at plus 135. So uh, Connecticut uh, had a bit of a disappointing tournament there in the uh, in the Big East, uh, where they were beaten by Crichton. Oh, sorry, I did it again against Crichton. Um, they were beaten there, and uh, yeah, disappointed uh, to say the least, losing that game. And as we can see there, we've got some uh, results there towards the end of the season. Not all complete results from the last few games, but some results. And we did see them thrash Georgetown right before the NCAA, uh, right before the Big East tournament started. Uh, Maryland coming into this not doing so well, losing to Michigan there in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, Michigan won. Uh, Michigan one of the top seeds in the uh, in the NCAA tournament. I believe they're a one seed. Uh, I'm not really. We're not going to cover them at the moment, but uh, Michigan looking really sharp, uh, possibly to win the tournament. Um, you know, I, I like UConn for this game. I think UConn is a, a very good game. Uh, or sorry, a very good team, uh, especially against uh, Maryland. Um, by all reports, Maryland, the idea is that they're going to slow down the game. They're gonna they're gonna try to keep possession, and I think that's gonna play into the hands of Connecticut. Connecticut are very good on the defensive end of the ball. Uh, they only gave up 64.6 points per game in the Big East, which was tops in the conference. And I think if we see a possession-based game uh, with Maryland uh, trying to hold on to the ball, then to me, that plays into the hands of Connecticut, and I'm back in Connecticut on this game and Maryland to lose in the first round. Now, let's take a look at uh, another game here. Uh, and one game that uh, I'm very interested in, and that is Missouri taking on Oklahoma. Now, the reason why I'm interested in this game is because I grew up in Missouri, and uh, I grew up supporting Missouri every year that the NCAA basketball tournament came around. Uh, I always rooting for them. And as we can see here, neither one of these teams really in uh, good form, if you will, going into this tournament. Um, you know, in the blog, I wrote that these are two so-so teams. Even though Missouri did have a decent record this year of 16 and 9, uh, Mizzou 
haven't had a, a winning season. It was their first winning season in three years, I guess I should say. Uh, the two previous years, they were below 500 in the regular season. So they've come into this with a, a pretty good season. But as you can see there um, from this last six games, they're a bit up and down. Uh, but again, I think that this is a game that we could see an upset. Oklahoma going as the number eight seed. Mizzou is the nine seed. Again, this is one of those things where it's really hard to pick. Although Oklahoma is <clears throat> the higher seed, these teams are, are, to me, very evenly matched. And I think Mizzou can upset Oklahoma in this game. Uh, Oklahoma was 15-10 and 10 in the regular season. Um, like I said, a bit of a disappointment. There were some, there were some uh, writers that I saw who were saying that they were, they were a little bit more consistent than uh, was expected. Uh, a lot of expectations preseason was that they were going to finish near the bottom of the Big 12. Um, which they did not, and they've made the tournament. As you can see, they are the favorites at one uh, minus 130, and Mizzou going at plus 110. I like Mizzou for this game. Again, this is a little bit of my bias, though, because I grew up in Missouri, and um, I think that they can win this game, though, uh, and knock off Oklahoma. Okay, so let's move on to our last game. As you can see there, I brought up the wall. Now, the wall is still being updated uh, throughout the day. And I don't actually have the the Virginia game. They're going to be taking on Ohio. They're, this game is not up here on the wall just yet. It should be up just any time now uh, after I get this blog or video up. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through the Virginia game that is coming up. They're going to be taking on Ohio in the first round on Saturday. Now, I really like Virginia in this game. And Virginia are the reigning champions, uh, as I said, because last season uh, the tournament was was canceled, and they are the 2019 uh, NCAA champions. Uh, Virginia have a, a very good style, a, a very direct style of basketball, and uh, they go. They went through the season at 19 and six. They uh, started very hot, dipped a little bit uh, at one point, but then uh, overcame that in the ACC tournament to win it um, just the other week. Now they're playing the 13 seed Ohio Bobcats, and I can't see anything else but a Virginia win. And like I say. I like Virginia to do well in this tournament and go deep. Now, if you watched our video last week on the NCAA tournament, you'll know that there um, there are some issues. Uh, well, historically, there are some issues, I guess I should say, with betting on the overall number one going into the NCAA tournament. And the overall number one was Gonzaga or is Gonzaga going into the tournament. Now, only one time since 2001 has the overall AP number one team won the NCAA championship, and that was the 2012 Arizona Wildcats. So I believe it's only – now, uh, you'll have to go back and watch that video from last week, but I believe it's only four times since 1985 when the tournament expanded to 64 teams that that number one overall team won the NCAA tournament. So I don't like Gonzaga to win this tournament. I don't. I think there are too many minefields in the end. Um, and, and, you know, when you're number one, everybody's gunning for you. So I like someone else to win this tournament. Virginia is, is a good team. Uh, and I think they could at least make the elite eight, um, at the moment. Going back to Gonzaga, uh, I'm, I'm a bit biased not to bet on them, um, because I, I've seen them fail, you know, multiple years. They've never won a national championship. They've been favored or at least seeded highly, um, for, you know, a lot of the times over the last 20 years, once they... Um, once they really uh, made that name for themselves. You know, there used to be that mid-major undercard, uh, or underdog, I should say, uh, but now they are one of the teams who are considered a favorite every year when the tournament begins, and I just don't buy it. Uh, so I, yeah, I'm i not backing them to win the NCAA tournament. Um, you can, if you feel like it, it's up to you, but um, that historical trend of the AP number one at the end of the season uh, not winning the NCAA tournament, that uh, that plays a, a big part in also what what uh, what I'm thinking. Um, but again, I like Virginia. I think they're going to beat Ohio, move on to the second round. And I like Virginia to do well in this tournament, potentially win the national title, maybe. But um, to at least go deep, I like them for the Elite Eight um, going forward. All right, guys, so those are my picks for the upcoming NCAA basketball tournament round one. I just gave you four games. Uh, you can read more about these games over on the blog at zcodesystem.com backslash blog. And we'll be bringing you more about the NCAA basketball tournament here on Z Code System throughout the tournament. It's going to come quickly, and it's going to go by quickly. So uh, good luck with your betting. Hope you enjoy the tournament, and we will see you soon here on Z Code System.